Hey, what's up, friends? You're watching The Thursday Show, and I'm Pastor Chelsea, and I'm so glad that you're with me this week. If you've been following along over the past few weeks, you would know that we have been in a series on The Thursday Show called the Bible Study Series, where each week we take a look at how we can study the Bible and read it for ourselves and apply it to our lives. So if you didn't check out last week's episode, we learned how to do an inductive Bible study. Check that out for sure. This week, I wanted to tackle some of these books. There's so many resources out there that help us study the Bible more, but they can be overwhelming if we don't know what they are, what they're for. So today I want to break down some of the Bible study resources that are available to you. Before we get into it, if you could like and comment on this video, I just like to hear your thoughts and the likes and the comments help spread the word of any video that we put out at Colonial Woods. So the more you like and comment, the better it is for everybody. So we appreciate you doing that. Well, let's get into the meat of some of the resources that are available to us as we study the Bible. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little bit of one of those nerdy episodes of the Thursday show. And so if you're like, yeah, I don't really want to learn about lexicons and commentaries. That's okay. You won't hurt my feelings. Well, maybe just a little bit if you don't watch this episode, but that's what we're going to work through today. What are some of the resources that are available to us when we study the Bible? So for today's purposes, I'm going to teach you five different types of book resources or digital resources that are available to you as you study the Bible. They are first, a Bible handbook, second, a concordance, third, a Bible dictionary, fourth, a lexicon, and fifth, a commentary. So let's get into those. First up, we have a Bible handbook. There's a lot of different ones of these written, but they're meant to be an overview of the Bible. They kind of give some background into authors of different books, locations, geography. For me personally, I really like illustrated Bible handbooks because I'm such a visual learner. It really helps me to see maps or pictures of ancient artifacts. So if you've never used any kind of resource tool before, a Bible handbook might be the great place to start. Our second resource tool is a concordance. A concordance is an alphabetical index that contains every word in the Bible. And so what's cool is you can look up a specific word in a concordance and see all the places that it's listed in the Bible. In a concordance, it also gives a number, a specific number for each Hebrew or Greek word that was used in the original manuscripts. This is helpful because then, as you study the Bible, you can see where different passages that use the same word occur. When using a concordance, you'll also find the term exhaustive or concise that goes along with it. An exhaustive concordance covers all of the words in the Bible, even articles like a and the. A concise concordance simplifies it so that the book isn't quite so huge. In a future episode of The Thursday Show, I'm going to break down more specifically how to use a concordance and how to do your own word studies. Our next Bible resource is a Bible dictionary. Much like a normal dictionary, all the words are listed out in alphabetical order, but here, instead of necessarily tying to all of the passages, they'll give a deeper explanation of cities, people, words that are used in the Bible. This can be helpful if you just don't know a term or you want to learn more about a specific city. This is a good place to go to answer some of those basic questions as you're studying the Bible. The next resource I want to tell you about is a lexicon. Now, I'll just warn you right now. A lexicon is for advanced study of the Bible. This is a resource that I myself haven't even used hardly at all, but I figured it's good to include it in our summary of different Bible resource books that are available to you. Lexicons are dictionaries of foreign languages. So for biblical study, that would be covering Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. A lexicon is helpful in studying the Bible, especially if you're trying to do some kind of word study. So for example, if you were doing a word study on the word love, in the English language, we have one word that covers love. But in the Greek language, you would find four different words that all mean love. A lexicon is helpful because it helps you see the differences and helps you see the different locations where those variations occur. 
What's helpful with many of the Bible resources that are out there today is lots of them combine some of these resources together. So for example, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance includes many traits of a lexicon into it as well so that you can do those word studies. The last Bible resource I wanna tell you about today is a commentary. A commentary is really helpful because it gives a further and deeper explanation of a specific passage. Now, there are lots of different kinds of commentaries out there. Some commentaries cover the entire Bible. Some commentaries just cover one book. And that's just amazing to me that our Bible is so rich and alive that books can be written about the one book of the Bible. So rather than looking up a specific word with a commentary, you look up a specific passage. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to do a study on John 1, starting with verse 1. In your commentary, you would look up John 1 and you would be able to see the scholar and author's notes on that passage. This can be helpful because it can make connections that maybe you or I wouldn't at first see because of our education or background or honestly just the fact that the Bible was written 2000 years ago. Now, there are actually four different types of commentaries out there. Let me break them down really quickly for you so you know the type of commentary that you're working with. The first type of commentary is an expository commentary. These are usually written by pastors for pastors. So they work through a passage and sometimes give a suggested outline or even maybe some suggested illustrations or metaphors that a pastor could then use as they're writing or preparing for a sermon. The second type of commentary is an exegetical commentary. These really are meant to dig deep into the text and provide some great scholarly information and interpretation. Usually written by theologians, professors, renowned scholars. These are deep books. And so if you're not sure you want to dive into that yet, that's totally okay. There's other commentaries out there that might be great for you, like a devotional commentary. These are meant to be easier to read, easier to digest, and allow you to take your Bible reading habit and take it a little bit deeper. And then the last type of commentary is a cultural commentary. This is actually one that I've just learned about and just ordered off of Amazon, so I should be expecting that package soon. But a cultural commentary gives you great background information into what was going on at that time in that passage. So for example, if we were using a cultural commentary for our study of John 1, it would tell us a lot about the country of Israel, the unrest that God's people were going through as they were awaiting their coming Messiah. Cultural commentaries are super helpful because they help us understand what was going on beneath the surface when we read a passage. Well, I just gave you a whirlwind of information of different resources that are available, but how do we use them? Well, I just want to give you three simple tips as we close up today on how to utilize some of these resources that are available. First of all, check the credibility of whatever book resource you use. Make sure it's a renowned scholar, theologian, publisher who's putting out that work. For example, I have the DK Complete Bible Handbook here, and I love it because it has so many illustrations within it and charts, things that might make my brain happy when I'm studying the Bible. But I know that DK isn't a Christian company, and so I'm going to take everything that they say in here and check it against God's word first and foremost. Second tip for using these resources is use a variety. Don't just stick with one resource. Add in several different ones, hear from different authors, experience different types of commentaries. This will give you a broader, more well-rounded understanding of scripture as you're studying it. And the last tip I have for you today, when it comes to using these Bible resources, and probably the most important thing I can say in this entire episode, is make sure you're reading your Bible more than you're reading these resources. These are fun and helpful and can illuminate scripture but we need to be reading our Bibles first and foremost. It is only God's word that is living and active, not the commentaries. And so we need to let God's word be the thing that we turn to first and foremost so that it can convict, it can transform, and it can change us. Well, I hope today's episode of The Thursday Show was helpful for you and gave you an explanation of some of the resources and tools that are available to you. Tell me in the comments which resource interests you the most. Maybe it's one you've used before. Maybe it's one you want to check out. 
Or if you're looking for specific recommendations on what Bible handbook, commentary, concordance, etc., that you want to use, tell me what you're looking for. And I'd be happy to make recommendations in the comments for any of these and maybe even other resources that we didn't cover today. Well, thanks for joining me today on the Thursday show. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, have a great Thursday.